there are things in this village you do not know about. Surayo, two men of a noble blood, be to you to be saved. Why are you so afraid? You are crazy. این چه خبره؟ میخوام بدونم تو کارایی که بر مربوطی استخالت نکن There are men in this town who are wild dogs زفره این نیش بلاخره هیکل تو مسموم شما من رو برداشتی شهادت و دروغ بده حقیقا نداره دروغ گفتی تو اینکه کت خدایی من قرم بذارم شما اینجا بری شما برشت به ایتی تو چجوری روت میشه؟ حضرت عباس بزنه به اون کمرت خاک بر سر تو سه تا نصب بعد تو برو کمشه بیرون یلا They cannot get away with this Where did you find the book? What were you thinking when you first read it? Was there a scene in that book that first popped out at you, Cyrus? Well, you know, I just picked it up at a bookstore. It was published in 1994. Uh, my wife, who's also a screenwriter, we both read it. It screamed movie to us. It uh, was emotional, it was gripping, um, dramatic. Um, it was just powerful mm -hmm. stuff. Sara, are you crazy? They think so. And that there is, be the bone, and inviting a stranger and your own. I'm inclined to agree. please. I will give you some tea. Then you decide who is crazy. Me or them. I mean, the book is called The Stoning of Sarai M. And I found that sort of knowing where I was going in a way was more tension felt. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I mean, a, a lot of Hitchcock kind of worked that way where he sort of would telegraph and you know where you're going, but you're stuck. And uh, I mean, in Titanic, you know, the ship's going down. Um, it's, uh, it, I just felt that this is a kind of docudrama. We are witness to a, a case of injustice. Mm -hmm. And we have to experience it each step of the way, put ourselves, put the audience in their footsteps and just go with it, no matter how much it's telegraphed. He called me and told me about the screenplay. And first thing I told him was, where were you for the last 20 years? <laughs> and he said, why? I said, I've seen a real one on tape. And since uh, then, You've I've seen a real stoning A real tape. stoning on tape, yes. That was smuggled out of Iran early 80s. And uh, you, can, you can imagine how I felt when I received it. I, all I asked him was to send it around, let me read it. I read it, fell in love with it, called him early morning. His voice was sleepy. And I said, I am in. I had also seen um, video of the real thing, mm -hmm. and uh, it's far more horrible than anything in the movie. So I felt I felt a certain responsibility to sort of tell the truth, and um, we also felt that it would be a disservice to the to the many victims if we sort of sanitize it. Today I am old, a hundred years older than yesterday. But I know right from wrong. What happened here yesterday was wrong. Yesterday. The devil himself visited this town. What was your first meeting like with Cyrus when you talked about the character? The character? Well, our concern was mainly to, be, um, to portray her not just as a victim. I feel like that was uh, that was sort of the trap of the character would be to just uh, fall fall into the, a sort of a victimy a, a portrayal. But we wanted to bring a, a sort of dignity and strength to her that perhaps she didn't know she possessed at the beginning of the film. When I was reading the script, obviously there's a <laughs> I'm quite different from the character in life, but I I was struck by how. Potentially, had I been born in a different set of circumstances, I uh, perhaps would not be so dissimilar to the character. And so that brought me incredibly close to her and made me feel, especially since she was based on a, on a, a real person, I felt an incredible responsibility um, to tell this story. The most important thing was to get uh, Zahra's uh, 
wish carried away or to take the torch, the torch and, and uh, take it uh, to the um, highest place in the world and let the whole world know what happened in that village as Zahra wished. That was the most important thing to me. Start your machine. Why should I listen to you? Hear my story first. You will know why you should listen. Voices of women do not matter in here. I want you to take my voice with you. <laughs> 